Hi, welcome to lesson two on low-level programming. My name is Dr. Ritesh Ajuda. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to define the concept of an assembly language. Use assembly instructions and directives to trace a program written in assembly language. And finally, use assembly instructions and directives to write a program in assembly language. So what is an assembly language? Just like machine language or machine code, assembly language is a low-level programming language. Machine language being more low-level than assembly language. This means that just like with machine language instructions, assembly language instructions have a direct connection with the processor of a computer. In order for assembly instructions to be run on the circuits of a processor, the assembly instructions first need to be converted to machine language instructions. This is done by a special program called an assembler. The assembly language makes use of mnemonics, which are words that are intended to provide a shorthand for machine language instructions. More specifically, these mnemonics are building blocks that make up the instruction format of a machine language instruction. Here are two examples. The operation code 0000 can be represented by the word stop, and the operation code 0111 can be represented by the word add, which means add to the A register. Using mnemonics, we can represent the entire binary instruction format. Here is an example of a machine language instruction, which if you recall from the previous lesson, is made up of the instruction specifier and the operand specifier. We can see that the operation code used in this instruction is 01010 which is to output a character from the operand. And the addressing mode used in this instruction is 000, which means that we are using immediate mode addressing. This simply means that we need to output the operand as an ASCII value. We can use this notion of mnemonics from the previous slide to substitute the binary string 01010 with C-H-A-R-O and 000 was simply an I for immediate mode addressing. We can also just write the operand as a hexadecimal value between the operation code and the addressing mode specifier. This is an example of an assembler instruction. This table shows the assembler instruction. The first column gives us the mnemonic and the second column shows the description of the mnemonic. As you may notice, the description of the mnemonic is very similar to the operation code description from the previous slide, with the exception of these three additional instructions. These three instructions are called branch instructions and allow us to direct the assembler to run various instructions in our program by referencing their memory addresses. By allowing the programmer to control the flow of the instructions in the program, these branch instructions pave the way for if statements and programmic loops. In this table, we have the assembler directives and the description of each directive. The first directive, .ascii, allows us to represent a string of ASCII bytes. The .block directive allows us to specify the number of bytes we would like to reserve for a variable or value. The .word directive reserves a space in memory equal to the word length of the computer. This is usually either 32 or 64 bits. And finally, the .end directive indicates the end of the program. Let's now try to trace a program written in assembler. Here's an example of a program written in assembler. The first instruction is BR main, which means we need to branch to the main memory address. Main here is a tag given to this memory address, so we would branch to this instruction. The next instruction, CHARO, char output, tells us to output a character using immediate mode addressing. That means that we need to output what's in the operand, which is 0x004d. Since we are outputting a character, we would simply reference the operand 4d from our ASCII table, which is m, and print it to the screen. The second instruction is very similar. We need to output a character whose ASCII value is referenced by the hexadecimal value 4f. So we go to the ASCII table, look for 4f, 
which is O, and output it to the screen. The next instruction, which is similar to the second and the first, tells us that we need to output a character, 5A. Let's look for 5A in the ASCII table, which is Z. The next instruction outputs an A. The next character is 52, which is R, and 54, which is T. So our output word is Mozart. Let's try to trace another assembly language program. In this program, we are trying to add three numbers together. These three numbers are given by the user. So we input three numbers. Let's suppose these numbers are 2, 3, and 4. Before we can begin tracing our assembler program, we need to first consider what directives are used. We see that two directives are used. We reserve a word length of space for a variable called sum, and we assign a zero to it. We also reserve two blocks of memory for another variable called num. At the beginning of our program, we branch to a memory address called main. We look for the memory address, we find it, and we branch to this memory address. In this instruction, we load sum to the accumulator. Sum currently contains a default value of zero, as was instructed by this directive to the assembler. So we will load a zero to the A register. The next instruction takes an input from the user and stores it into num. The next instruction, ADDA, add to the accumulator num using direct memory addressing. So we simply add whatever's contained in num to the A register. In the next instruction, we are asked to input a decimal value and store it in num. So we overwrite the existing value of num and store the new value of num given to us by the user. In the next instruction, we add num to the accumulator. The following instruction gets another value from the user and overwrites num. Then we add num to the accumulator. We then store whatever's in the accumulator into a variable called sum and finally we output sum to the user. Let's look at one more assembly program which makes use of a loop in its implementation. There are three variables in this program that we need to reserve space for. Sum, which we allocate a word length of space for. Num, which we allocate two blocks of space for and finally limit that we allocate two blocks of space for. We begin with the first instruction, branch to main. Once we branch to main, we see the instruction decimal input into limit. Let's input a two. The next instruction is referenced by the word loop. And this instruction tells us to input a number and store it into num. Let's input a 5. The next instruction tells us to load into the accumulator the value in sum. So we load sum into the accumulator. We then add num to the accumulator and store whatever's in the accumulator to sum. We then load limit to the accumulator, which is 2. We subtract 1 from the accumulator, and 2 minus 1 is 1, and we store whatever's in the accumulator into limit. So we should replace the old limit value 2 with 1. The next instruction tells us to branch if the value in the accumulator is greater than 0 to the memory address loop. We see that the value in the A register is a 1 which is greater than zero, so we branch to loop. We then continue with our program from this new memory address, loop. We input another number, let's input four. Load sum into the accumulator. Add the value in num to the accumulator. Store whatever's in the accumulator to sum. Load the limit to the accumulator. Subtract 1 from the limit. 
store what's in the accumulator in the variable limit. Then we branch to loop if whatever's in our accumulator is greater than zero. We know that there is a zero in the accumulator. Zero is not greater than zero. And so we move to the next instruction. We then output sum and stop the program. In this assembly program, we've seen that we can implement a loop using the branch instruction. We can also implement if statements. Can you imagine how an if statement would operate using the branch instruction? To solidify your understanding of the concepts presented in this lesson, consider doing the following homework exercises. First, write an assembly program that multiplies two input integers. Then, write an assembly program that outputs the word Beethoven. And finally, write an assembly program that takes in an input integer x and prints all the positive numbers less than x, which can divide x with no remainder.